Hey guys, thank you so much for jumping in today. My name is Danny Coldblood, aka my music video. Doing a GTA 5 online discussion video with my friend Thomas Davis, aka Beyond Vapor. Thomas, how you doing today, buddy? It's Friday. It's the weekend. I couldn't be better, man. Glad to be awesome. here with you guys. Definitely, dude. Thank you for joining joining me for this discussion, man. Now, um, we're going to start it off over here at this location and go ahead and tell me and everyone else exactly what is special or important about this location right here. Well, we're at the range, guys. Um, this is also known as Stab City in GTA, but in real life, it's located in Slab City. Um, which is also the location of the hippie camp. Um, this place right here is where most people come if they're trying to escape, you know, just the natural flow of things. Um, they don't want to be in the real world. I mean, this place is freedom. Um, in the real world, people come here, um, they're squatters, they're from all different walks of life, but one thing that they have in common is they don't want to be controlled by laws. Um, so, so you mean to tell me I can, I can come here in real life is what you're telling me? You can, you can come here and probably be undocumented um, if you wanted to. Oh man, see this is good. But this place, this place is um, where they come to play music. It's called The Range. It's uh, there's a stage and everything. Um, they bring the, the the sofas that are sitting out here aren't mimicking uh, how poor this place is. The sofas are um, actually sitting out there around the range. They're donated by different people, um, and it's actually considered artwork. Um, so it's nothing to do with poverty. It's just um, you know, escaping the natural modern world. But here we have these three spotlights and that's what makes it really significant uh to the mystery because these three spotlights correlate perfectly with our three characters um franklin of course trevor and michael now one thing that you brought up are these two skulls with horns on them right directly right. behind Trevor's circle if this is Trevor's circle which points again to the fact that he is the devil um, also we have a star you know maybe meaning the one star that's missing um, but also just a little nod don't take life too serious which also shows the um, you know how these people are living you know they don't take life too serious out here um it just it, it really it, a lot of people think that um gta is making a, a parody of places and you know trying to make a joke you know but they're they're showing real real things you know places that it only takes two seconds you know to look into and uh find out things that that this game can't even fit in the game you know so if you if you do some research about these places you'll find uh, a lot more clues to the mystery than you can even find in these actual places but they, I, I they agree just, with you man like I just want to point out the one thing is I had a couple things in my head and I didn't have a way to connect them yet so they've been in my back pocket and then you went ahead and showed me this and the first thing that I thought of when you told me about how it's a little music uh, gathering area in real life is that maybe one now this is just my opinion but maybe the clue that they're trying to give us here is a little bit more symbolic maybe they're trying to say music is important in this game pay attention to it it might help you in the mystery and the reason I think that is because in different uh, parts of the game I've noticed that the music that they have set for that part of the game is just its just ridiculous the way the lyrics and the mood really match what's going on. I mean, you kill Trevor, the lyrics really make you wonder if you made a good choice. I mean, just everything. Everything in this game with music really Definitely. 
he has a connection. So when you showed me this and told me what it was in real life, I couldn't believe it. I really took this as maybe they're trying to have us look at the music a little bit more closely. That's my opinion, yeah. but that's just what I think. And when you look at it from that point of view, you can go even further as to say that they have music that represents Trevor. They have music that represents Franklin. And they have music that represents Michael. I mean, I would basically say that Rebel Radio is Trevor's station. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, so you can, you can go even deeper by saying, you know, that. See, and another thing that I want to point out to everybody is don't fight this fight alone, guys. Uh, most, most of the hunters I've met are really cool people, and everyone has their own strong points. And this game was not made by one guy or two guys. It was made by a group of people that were all different individuals, just like we are all different individuals and different um, hunters. And getting together and talking and showing each other's uh, finds to each other, I'm telling you guys, you're going to come to more connections and stuff's going to make more sense because other people have things that you don't know. Like, if it wasn't for Beyond Vapor knowing these places in real life and knowing exactly what they're all about, I would never have ever have made any of these connections that I just talked about right now, you know, with my opinion on that. And maybe you guys have something that you wouldn't have came up with. So I just wanted to point that out. They also gave us a new radio station. Um, also another nod. If, if, if what you say, you know, in the updates, they're giving us a bunch of mysteries. I mean, a bunch of clues to the mysteries. Um, well, they gave us the lab and, you know, it's another radio station. It is, um, and maybe that's just place... another clue saying, hey guys, music, it's important. And I just want to add one quick thing about that, is that I heard a couple commercials on the lab that made me really, really think. And uh, too bad you can't record the music in this game because of copyright, because, man, I would have so much of this stuff recorded. But I just wanted to point that out. Um, another thing I encourage you guys to do, like I said earlier, I mean, just check out these real places because they're all um, real places in real life. This, uh, these towers that you see all across GTA, they're not so mysterious if you um, check out what they really are. They're also located in Slab City, the same place that the range is located. Um, everyone seems to think, you know, those are sex positions, yoga um, positions. They might be, you know, in this game. And, um, but if you look at the wheel in real life, these towers, they're called the wheel of karma k-a-m-a -A, not karma um because there is the wheel of karma which uh hinduism bases their religion on and all kinds of different things but these towers will show you so so many different things that correlate to this mystery in real life things that they weren't even able to put on these towers but um maybe you know we can get some more answers you know on this towers like these symbols and stuff like that what what do they mean by by just looking at the real towers in real life um i think that's a very that strong really point done. dude i think that's very important because honestly if we do that and we when we do examine and, and some do some research we might find real good important clues in real life based on the clues in the game we don't know how far they took this um so we got to get together with a lot of hunters. Guys, get together. Like Some people see those images, like he said, as uh, yoga. Some people see them as sex positions. And some people like Beyond um, Vapor, okay, he seen it as its real-life connection. And what sounds to me like the more important one that we have to work with. So thank you for that, man. I, I know these places in real life, and um, that's why I, I'm able to, you know, make these connections. But um, some things I'm not able to point out or able to see, uh, I use, you know, other stuff that the other hunters have given me. Like um, Wispy, for um, example, he, he always talks about the bird's eye view and how important it is. Well, I've come to know that uh, the helicopter – at nighttime is an owl um, because we can see in the dark and it opens up so much more to us um, at nighttime. And, and just like the owl, I mean, he's 
is known as the most wise bird. Um, I just think most of the answers are given to you, um, you know, using all these other, other different things. You know, take your common knowledge, but use all these little tips that um, all the other hunters are giving you, you know? Just right. Insert it into your daily hunt. Exactly, it dude. Maybe it exactly. works, maybe it doesn't. You never know, man. You never know, but I can say it can't cause any harm. You know what I mean? It's, Definitely you're gonna not. You're going to probably come out with something positive and something informative and something that's going to make a lot of people say, wow, good job. That's really good stuff. Just like I said to you, I couldn't wait to get you on this discussion video, man. I really appreciate you doing this. I know that we have a little bit more stuff that we want to talk about. Um, unless you feel like we're done, do you want to go and uh, make a part two or do you want to... Uh, do you want to end it and, and call it part two for next time? It's up to you. Um, We can go ahead and continue for the part two because there's just a couple more things uh, I'd like to show you guys. Um, And I'd like to start out um, in a place that uh, we, just, we just left. <laughs> okay, so we'll be right back, guys. Check out the uh, the next video on the on the channel for the part two, and you'll see us there. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.